Alex Rocco joins the show to break down big time performances from Kelly Maxwell, Kirsten Deal, and Big 12 Player of the Week, Sydney Sanders from Oklahoma's sweep of Iowa State. Coming up next on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It was a sweep down the Oklahoma Plains from the Oklahoma Sooners of the Iowa State Cyclones. And here to break it all down with us is Alex Tarocco, who joins us weekly. Make sure you follow her on Twitter at Alex Tarocco and go check out her merch store, alextarocco.com. Alex, how are we doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, we're doing fantastic. And just off the top, I mean, we we know this Oklahoma offense is going to put up runs. But what they did against Iowa State, you know, in the second and third games, was what we're accustomed to with the Oklahoma Sooners. So what do you think might have been the difference, you know, in this this approach? Was it just, okay, we're we're back at home, we're seeing things a little bit more clearly. We've got some time at Love's Field now. It's not the the aura isn't as big now that we've played a series in it. What do you think made it might have changed or was this just always coming? Was this bubbling? Yeah, I feel like it has to do a little bit with everything you kind of mentioned with just not only the just atmosphere being a little different. Like you said, they have a series under their belt at loves. Um, I think I talked about it a little bit last weekend of just, they only have one team to prepare for and not five different teams to look after and in the film and all of that. And then also just like having that kind of weight lifted off of you of, you know, the streak difference, um, and a lot of that, I feel like even when I saw on TV as well as in person this weekend, them playing Iowa State, they just look so free. They look like they were having a lot of fun. Um, and just being able to just go play and be who they are out on the field instead of, you know, the Oklahoma Sooners who are chasing this streak and, you know, making a name for themselves in their own way. They're playing um, to almost prove themselves again. And I feel like um, – that always comes after maybe a little ranking of a number two, but um, I was excited for them because I feel like I had just been waiting to see that change in them. Um, just like knowing how just the attitude attitude is for the weekend um, and how something like that, some controversy can, you know, light a fire. And so I was just kind of like waiting for it to happen. And I feel like they really, really took that look themselves in the mirror um, and were able to just explode against Iowa State. So I was really excited to see that. We'll, of course, have to discuss Sidney Sanders in short order here. But, uh, you know, it's it's well known. Jada Coleman can do a number of different things and has pop in the bat. But when you think about what Jada Coleman and Riley Boone provide for Oklahoma, and then the second game of the doubleheader on Saturday, each of those two go yard. I mean, like, what does that do? to an opposing pitcher when you're facing this lineup that has all these different bats and then the the couple of outfielders show, okay, well, look out. Now I got to worry about them being a home run hitter. Yeah, I mean, this weekend you saw seven different Sooners go yard. Um, and so I think that just adds to – how amazing OU softball is, is you're not just looking for one or two home run hitters. You're, you literally have to look at the whole lineup and then some, because I mean, you have Quincy Lilio wanted to join the party on Sunday with a three run home run too. So when you have more than one person who has that kind of capability um, and Riley Boone swing, like, I think I rewatched that thing like a million times because me, like I know I hit lefty, but just a pure lefty swing, I think is like one of the prettiest things about baseball and softball. So like she really let that one go and just to see her kind of explode like that, you've, you've seen her kind of do literally lit like a little bit of everything this season. So for her to really have that big pop was um, just really fun to see. Um, I saw too, just the offense being able to celebrate everything um, in their own way. They, they finally came up with their own celebrations for, you know, the single double and home runs this weekend. Um, that always kind of adds that little kind of personality um, as well as just not having to go through the motions with maybe like um, a celebration that they've done in the past or anything like that. So when you kind of see the team kind of take their own kind of personality offensively and defensively, um, you just get that added 
just fearlessness and um, intensity. So I was really excited to see that from all cylinders this weekend. Well, and at the top of the lineup, we had a, a new name leading off. Cassidy Pickering got a couple ch- a couple chances to lead off for the Sooners. Her and Ella Parker, both just phenomenal so far for the Sooners in their true freshman year. Actually, they're one in two in batting average right now on the team. How hard is that? I, I think, you know, because of TRA and because of Jada and because of Jocelyn, like we have this expectation that even highly rated true freshmen can just walk right in and be great right away but how difficult is it what Cassidy Pickering and Ella Parker are doing so far this year um it's one thing to be good but I think they're great right now and you see that performance wise but then also just the way that they carry themselves in success and in failure they look like they're having fun and it's easy to succeed when you're having fun especially out on the diamond and so when you see that and you see Cassidy Pickering she was four for nine this weekend Ella Parker five for seven I mean those are just unreal numbers um And I think that also just comes with the freshness of being your first year. And, you know, a lot of opponents don't know what, you know, you hit well and what you don't. And so you're able to just kind of be free in that, in that aspect of, Hey, I'm new here and I'm just kind of prove on who I am and where I'm from. And I think that's an attitude that they both kind of take in and um, really listening to their elders and just playing free and having fun. The, the work at second base for Oklahoma with, Alina Torres with Avery Hodge, I think is one of the good examples for Oklahoma of there's just a lot of options that the Sooners can throw at you. What do you make of what each of those two bring for Oklahoma at second base and then from an offensive and defensive standpoint? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, Coach Gasso can't go wrong between the two. Um, And they have their own um, differences uh, between Avery and Torres. Um, Torres obviously has a little bit more pop. She's got the range. She showed it last weekend um, and just making some great plays over there. And she's really been all over the field as well as um, Avery Hodge. Um, I think she's more of maybe a little bit defensive specialist, but she also has that lefty small game ability too. Um, and she had a good weekend too. So I really think that they're probably won't be a really steady position at second base for the rest of the year. It's going to be a situational decision. Um, and coach has kind of proven that already and just like how she um, subs in um, the two of them for each other. And so I'm just excited to see kind of the mastermind really develop between it all. Cause like, I'm trying to like, from the stands and from my couch trying to decide, I'm like, okay, this is a good situation where she goes with, you know, Avery here or Torres here. So I'm just trying to see if I'm like slowly climbing to maybe Coach Gass's mindset. Um, but it's almost like a game within a game because you feel like you can really never guess. But um, I think that just also adds to just so many cylinders of OU Um Obviously, at the end of the weekend on Sunday, you saw quite literally a whole new field um, defensively out there. And so it was just um, exciting to see a little bit of a glance in the future of Sooner softball, too. Yeah, the, the future is bright, but also the future is now because mm-hmm. not just, you know, with Ella Parker and Cassidy Pickering, but you're you're getting big time performances from people like Kirsten Deal, uh, who had a phenomenal uh, start again. Uh, she's just on a roll, but we're going to talk about somebody who is in the midst of a bounce back season and really helping this Oklahoma's offense turn the corner. We're going to do that next here on Locked On Sooners. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers often the oklahoma Sooners get big time additions through the transfer portal. We've seen it for several years now, but when they added Sidney Sanders, who was the NFCA freshman 
of the year in 2022, had hit 21 home runs, had 63 RBIs, hit over 400. I think everybody just had this expectation like, okay, here's your Jocelyn Hollow replacement. If you could even have such of a thing, right? Well, it wasn't a, an easy transition for Sydney. She, she didn't necessarily get off to the greatest start, but came on strong in conference play and, and then in the College World Series and NCAA tournament. But man, she is mashing the ball right now. Six home runs in March, eight home runs on the season. She's leading the Oklahoma Sooners in home runs, in slugging, OPS, on base percentage, walks, just doing everything all of it. So first, as a former teammate of hers, how happy are you for Sydney Sanders right now? I'm pumped. I feel like Sid has always just worked really hard of just like really just growing her knowledge of the game. And I feel like last year was just a big part of that and just learning how um, OU really develops their offense game through film and preparation. And I feel like that was also a big transition for myself as well um, in the pitching staff and stuff. So last year, yes, she performed, but maybe not to the expectations everyone kind of had. Um, and so just to see her kind of really explode um, this year has been super exciting. Um, and just like, I feel like it's been waiting to happen. I feel like a big teller is like, um, her number of walks, her number of walks is insane. And there's each weekend leading up to that, she's had just a significant amount. And so when you see that slowly building, I'm like, okay, she's really seeing the ball really well. She knows her own strike zone. Um, when is it going to explode? And I feel like this weekend was just a huge testament to that of knowing her strike zone and being able to just kind of let loose and let it fly because, it's just been so insane to see how the ball flies off of her bat. She's not just sneaking them over the fence anymore. She is, I mean, hitting them to the concourse. It was, it was just wild. There was fireworks everywhere. Um, for her to have, you know, four home runs in 24 hours was crazy. So I'm, I'm so excited for her. I think that's a good point that you bring up 45 <laughs> walks for Sanders, her first season at Arizona State. She already has 15 so far this year, 26 a season ago. So if that gives you some sort of a barometer of kind of what the, the seasons look like, what uh, what's Sydney like? I mean, you know, obviously you're a pitcher. She's a hitter, but uh, you both came into Oklahoma from other places. Did you bond over that? And what uh, what's Sydney like? I mean, she is kind of um, just a quiet being in herself. Um, we – bonded a lot over just like, like you said, the transition. Um, and just also just being from different areas. I know she has a lot of the California connection, um, with a lot of the girls and played a lot of the girls growing up and stuff. Um, I didn't have that. Um, but she's just like, a just a teddy bear. She's really like just a loving person and just laughs at everything. And, um, just, just excited to be there and works her, works her butt off. So, um, like I said, I'm just excited to see just really that transition and her being able to explode. Um, and it was just really fun to have her as a teammate a year ago. And so um, the success is so warranted for her. So, yeah. Let's let's turn the corner a little bit to the pitching staff because it was a really good weekend. You know, Kelly Maxwell, the seven inning shutout. Let's start with that. You know, four runs or it was a four nothing win for the Sooners. It was a one nothing game for a lot of it. So, and she was kind of in some tight situations. Talk about Kelly Maxwell's performance a little bit, because I, I thought she was fantastic on Friday or sorry, in the first game on Saturday. Yeah. Um, I thought Kelly really kind of showed out in just maybe a closer game um, than usual and not a huge offensive game either. I feel like we've had a little bit more closer games where it's big offensive numbers. And this game was maybe your first one where it was kind of closer um, and lower offensively. And Kelly was a big part of that. Um, she really kind of held it down um, in order for the offense to kind of, you know, explode and really kind of get going for the day. Um and so for her to have that kind of day and like kind of like show the offense, like, Hey, I have your back until you guys get this done. I feel like that's a really big part of a uh, pitcher mentality. Um, and just like her veteran status, I think is where that really comes from as well. And just being able to hold it down for your offense until they figure out, figure it out. Um, especially in the first game of a weekend against a conference team. Um, I feel like even, I think if I remember correctly, Iowa state at Iowa state last year, I pitched the Friday night game and it was a three zero game. So it's like just kind of getting into that first kind of conference flow, um, being able to hold it down against, you know, your first kind of big 
12 series. I think that's a big thing too, but Kelly did super well. I mean, eight strikeouts, uh, three walks. Um, and so only four hits crazy. And so I'm just excited for her to really kind of develop in that way. And just knowing too, she can go out there, throw her all in game one and not really have to worry about starting another game for the weekend or maybe having to close, or maybe she gets another inning or two the rest of the weekend, but knowing her job is really done for the weekend. I think that's a big relief that she'll feel um, for the next couple of series going through conference that she's might not be able to just reflect on in her prior experience. What about the pitching the rest of the weekend? Uh, what did you think just kind of overall in the circle for Oklahoma? Yeah, I think someone that really stands out to me is Kirsten Deal. I know a lot of people kind of, you know, were surprised by her start in Puerto Vallarta. Um, but I feel like that kind of came with just a little bit of the nerves first weekend. You're just so excited that you every, the ball's going everywhere. Um, she's really stepped up since then and just continuing to grow her game. When I'm watching on screen and in person, her ball is jumping. And that is just so exciting as a pitcher when you really get to like nerd it out over just pitching in general. Um, and her being able to just throw on a lot of different levels, a lot of different speeds and being able to locate. I mean, she's really pitching um, and getting better and better every weekend, which is amazing to see from a sophomore who's still growing with her experience in innings and everything. So for her to have these games, I am, am really excited for her. And she's just one too, that has really kind of soaked in everything that she can um, is just like pouncing to really like, prove herself in this kind of scene um, within college softball. So she's a really big name for me. SJ really coming down, shutting it down. She gave up her first hit of the season. So for her to go, you know, six innings and not had given up a hit, I think is huge. Um, so pump for her. Peyton Monticelli, she was throwing gas again. And so, um, yeah, I think the staff really kind of bounced back from last weekend's uh just series of games and everything. So I was excited for them and just being able to kind of settle down in the environment that loves has. So from a pitching standpoint, you know, we we've seen over the last <clears throat> couple of years, often you know, there might be a base runner that, that gets to third and less than two outs, but often it seems like Oklahoma then turns it up a notch and shuts it down. So what is it about the mentality there that, that is there a mentality change that occurs when you get to that, runner on third, less than two outs, and you go to a different level, your strategy changes. Can you talk about that from a pitching perspective? To like what changes that all of a sudden you just shut it down? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I know that while at OU, we really dove into just our mindset and not changing our mindset from like a bullpen to warmups to, to the game. I know that was a big one last year. Um, and just being able to not have that kind of, long-term memory um as a pitcher when you want to go from good to great you really think about that one second kind of memory and um we call it like a goldfish a goldfish memory kind of from uh ted lasso and so when you kind of have that kind of reference and being able to kind of forget whether that was a baller strike and the umpire called it a baller strike or you thought it was a baller strike because that could be a thing too um not being able to kind of like live in the past whether that was a pitch ago or two batters ago being able to know that you know this next pitch is going to be the pitch for this count setting inning hitter whoever it is like you have to buy into every pitch and so when you really kind of start to morph into that mindset i think it it brings just another really big part of like that mindset growth that they really build at OU. Um, and so I think it's been fun to see how the new pitchers really dive into that of just being able to buy into that one pitch mentality. And I think at OU, it's a whole different meaning because, you know, you're not taking on maybe two games or a game and a half every weekend. You're, you get, you have your part to do and that's when you do it. And so when you're able to really, put forth 110% of mind body into every pitch. I think it changes a lot of those, that movement aspect, that um, execution aspect from, you know, really intense situations like a runner on third, less than two outs and, you know, just starting the game. How do you feel about uh, Ted Lasso references uh, as coaching tools? 
I mean, I love them. I, I I love Ted Lasso. I don't think is there a third season now because I need to catch up on it. They take forever to film. So, but I loved Ted Lasso. It was like one of my favorites. Well, yeah, uh, the third season is fully out and it's done, and you have to watch it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need to. <laughs> I just finished Suits, so that's a good good uh, show to start back on. I like it. Uh, obviously, a big uh, week coming up for the Sooners. Just sort of big picture here. Where is Oklahoma at in your mind? What do you think about this team so far? Um, I'm just excited that they kind of flipped the switch in just a attack mode and just like, but in a different sense. I feel like they're in a relaxed t- attack mode where before I saw a lot of maybe going through the motions or just, I mean, not lackadaisical, but like they were just doing enough to be good enough. And so I feel like from a lot of different aspects, coach kind of talked about it in a lot of different ways, whether that was playing uh, McNeese down in, in Louisiana and just talking about warmups or um, just situations where, you know, three years in a, in a game, this like unlike them. So I feel like this weekend you really saw just kind of the celebration of the little stuff. I know everyone exploded when we exploded on walks last year. And I feel like they're really kind of buying into that again in a, in a different mindset each each team every year has a new personality and a new just gel and I feel like for a little bit they were kind of living off of last year's just personality and what they did last year I feel like they finally really kind of developed something for like this year's group and this year's team and roster so I'm excited to see them just like buy into this new vibe mojo that they got going on and really just build off of it because I feel like once you have that everyone is able to buy in because they understand why it's there, why you do it. And so I just think this is now just a really big building opportunity um, in a lot of that way. And so I'm excited to see where they take it, um, especially within conference. Now I was, I, if we're going to take a pro out of the loss, I was glad the loss was not in conference. So that was my big aspect. Um, And so I'm excited to see how they attack each conference series from here on out. I know this year it felt like they had a lot more midweeks. I know tonight they have a midweek doubleheader against Tarleton State. So I'm curious as to see just like how coach will um, just go into every weekend and knowing that, you know, there's a game on a Tuesday or Wednesday that they're going to be playing. And so just to see maybe her flirt with a little bit more of a, a lineup switch up than she already does. So like I said, just a building block. Um, this is their first like main kind of away series with Texas Tech. So um, I'm excited to see how they go down to Lubbock and really kind of explode into that kind of mindset. Yeah, the Sooners take on Texas Tech this weekend. They got Tarleton State in the midweek. We're going to ask Alex what caught her eye across the country just for softball. There was a lot of shuffling in the rankings. And is LSU for real? Coming up next here on Locked on Sooners. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Every year, every team is a little bit different. But how surprised are you about what is happening with Florida State? Um, I'm shocked, but I'm not. Um, I know that Kent Sandercock graduating was a huge loss. And so it was um, a big just kind of realization of, okay, who's stepping up. And I feel like they thought, you know, Allison Royalty, McKenna Reed were going to do the job. And I just feel like McKenna Reed is hasn't quite developed as much as maybe they'd like. Um, and so they're kind of missing that just big pitcher that's going to eat a lot of innings like um, Sander Cock did. Um, so I just think that goes to a little bit more of like the youth of their pitching staff. Um, but then again, you look at UCLA, who has a lot of young pitchers on their staff, and they've started to figure it out as well. Um, so you just kind of have to lean on um, a little bit more offense, and I feel like Florida State has. They have their 
their older kind of hitter core hitters um, in their lineup. So Florida State has been a little shocking, um, truthfully. But from a pitcher standpoint, yes and no. Um, I feel like a big one for me I was locked in on. I feel like a lot of Oklahoma fans were also locked in on, whereas the um, Oklahoma or the Texas Houston series. Um, and so that was a big one. And I was at the game on Sunday, the OU game and like on my phone was the Texas Houston game because I was like, Oh, they pulled ahead six, two. And then I looked at the score and I was like, Oh my gosh, it's six, six. Like, could this happen? Like, I feel like a lot of people were locked in on that just because Texas had previously just been ranked number one in a couple of rankings. So that was a big part too. Um, and I just watched the Texas LSU game today and seems like they kind of got it going on. And, you know, um, actually one of my best friends is on LSU. So it was exciting for her and stuff. So um, I'm excited to see just kind of what LSU has brewing. They have the, they have just that veteran status kind of like OU does as well with Taylor Pleasance, Allie Newland and Sierra Briggs. Um, just to have a good core. And I've always actually really enjoyed playing um, LSU and Beth Tarina. And I think she's got a great program over there as well. So um, I'm excited to see what they do kind of with this run that they have. One more from me, Alex. Uh, what do you make of Texas Tech this weekend for Oklahoma? Yeah, I feel like last year they kind of exploded in being a little bit more of a home run team. And so it's kind of unexpected. I know last year they also kind of threw the um, – new pitcher every inning at Oklahoma Sooners. So I'm excited to see what they are going to bring this um, series. Um, I know that they have um, just a quality couple of core hitters too. Um, they have a couple hitting in the high 300s. Um, they got a lot of RBIs and they're 19 and five and you don't get a bad quality team with that kind of schedule, no matter who you're playing. Um, they, really have just been playing some quality softball in their state and mine. And so I'm excited to see if they kind of push any OU buttons for the weekend, but um, especially kind of taking them on in Lubbock. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say a full sweep for the OU Sooners, but I'm excited to see just the series and, you know, having the freshmen kind of get used to playing not in Love's Field or not in a five-game kind of round-robin type and seeing conference at an away series for the first time, especially in Lubbock. So, Yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a good matchup, I think. You know, Texas Tech just went up to Provo and took two or three from BYU in a, in a really good series as well. It's a, it's a whole new Big 12 look now with 10 teams as opposed to seven. Uh, but so much great content here from Alex. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining the show. Make sure you all follow Alex on Twitter at Alex Tarocco for softball tweets all throughout the week. And she's, I mean, she's covering everything. She's watching it all. She's seeing it all play out. So she'll give you all the analysis. And if you got questions, go ask them to Alex over at alextarocco.com. Check out the merch store at alextaraco.com. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on Ref, myself at John Nine Williams. But until next time, she's Alex. He's Josh. I'm John Boomer. Boomer.